everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Zian Desiel and today I'm going to show you how to do a basic shirt block that you'll be able to use to develop different style of blouse and shirt. For this uh, shirt pattern I'm going to start with the darkless block that I did on a previous video and of course like for any other pattern I'm going to start by tracing all around and indicate the pivot of the dart for back and front. Most of the thing that we'll do for the construction I'll do for both back and front in the same time with a tiny little difference is that for your front you're going to start by tracing a square line from center front touching the waist and side seam point. The first step is going to be to elongate your shirt and this time we'll do it all the way to the hip level. I think it's a good length for the shirt. We'll add also a little tail after. We're going to elongate them 21 cm back and front. And on the front I'm going to measure my 21 from the square line that I just did. Then for both back and front I'm going to square a line at the bust level at the waist, I'll elongate and at the hip level. Now, just as a reference, in case you want to create a little dart later on, you're going to indicate the princess line level or the dart level. You're going to trace a square line from the bust line at the pivot of the dart for both back and front. Uh, already you could put your indication three quarter from waist to hip on the back so that's for me 15.75. In case you want to create a dart later on same thing in the front so from the pivot of the dart and the front length of the dart is 10.5 or half distance from waist to hip. For both of them also you're going to trace your side seam first straight from underarm point square down all the way to the hip line. Like I did on the last elongated bodice uh, in case you, your hip measurement is bigger than the bust measurement I'm going to add a little extra at the hip level parallel to my straight line for 5 cm back and front. Last time we did want to keep the bodice very fitted as much as we could. This time we want it looser at the waist because it's a shirt. So instead of measuring from the waist point we're going to measure from the straight line 1 or 1.5 cm inside just to give a little curve and have a better fall of your shirt. I will do 1.5 for this one inside at the waist. And you're going to connect this point with your underarm point. Now you're going to do a nice S-shaped line for the hip curve, both back and front. Now we're ready for the top part. First I would like you to enlarge your neck because the block as it is is really really close to the neck and to make it more comfortable I suggest you enlarge your neck parallel 5 millimeter all around keeping it straight in the back for about 3 centimeter. In the front we have to match the neck also so we're going to enlarge 5 millimeter at the shoulder since the shoulder they're going to be sewn together but at the center front I would drop it 1 centimeter and connect both points. We're ready for the shoulder now. First you're going to trace a square line from center back touching the shoulder and arm all point and you're going to go out on that line just a little bit, 5 millimeter for this one and connect with the new neck point. Now you're going to take this measurement, I have 12.8 and on the front you're going to also square a line touching the shoulder and arm all point square from center front but this time you're going to report the measurement you find in the back because we don't want no ease on the shoulder anymore. Exactly the same measurement from the new neck point and you pivot your ruler until you reach to your measurement. 
and retrace. We're now going to fix the armhole according to that new point at the shoulder blade area. Try not to change it too much. Same thing in the front. In the front armhole, uh, what I will do also is make the bottom part a little less curved because if you remember, we did pivot part of the shoulder dart in the arm hole, so it makes it bigger. And usually the arm hole are the same measurement or a little bit bigger in the back. In that case, because we did transfer part of the shoulder dart at the arm hole, the front might be bigger. Now it's time to measure the new arm hole, and you should do it from the bottom and stop measuring at the notch to write down the measurement. Continue all the way up. Same thing on the back. Now, most probably, that's exactly what's going to happen to you. My back is smaller, by one centimeter, smaller than the front armhole, and that's a little too much. I think if it's more than 0.5, you should play with your curve and play with the armhole before going any further. So in that case, since it's a shirt, I want it comfortable, so I'm going to enlarge my back. So I'm just going to go up a 5 millimeter, retrace my shoulder, and now I know that my back is 5 millimeter smaller than my front arm hole. We're going to finish the shirt pattern, the bodice part. To find out the position of your yoke line, you might take your block again and look at where was the shoulder blade dart. That's pretty much the right level for the yoke. I'll be able to trace a square from the center back touching this level. Right away I'm going to place double notch and I'm going to take another piece of paper to retrace my yoke, fold it in half and place it under your plan at the center back. You might just fold your plan placing center back on the fold line and trace it all around. Now let's go on the front. Usually the seam, the shoulder seam is move a little bit towards the bottom of the front and this little part will be added to the back yoke. The measurement is usually about 1.5 centimeter and you're going to trace it parallel to your new shoulder line. We're already going to place a notch for assembling. I'm going to fold my plan at the shoulder line and I'm going to place it right next to the back shoulder line. And I'm going to trace my front part of the yoke. The yoke is ready, we're going to add the seam allowance and cut it. And we'll also do the notch, so I have my double notch for the back, single notch for the front. You you're going to add two extra notch to indicate the shoulder, because we need it to sew the collar and we need it to sew the sleeve over there. So original shoulder line. Then you're going to need the indication for the center back. I like to put the neck one at five millimeter, the yoke line right on the center. The reason why we do the complete yoke is because you have two choice, let's say, for the grain line. Very often when it's a striped fabric, your grain line is going to be this way. Other style, you might want to do the normal grain line this way. And usually this piece is cut too. Now let's do the bottom with the little tail at the back and at the front. We're going to elongate another 3 cm parallel to the bottom for, let's say, about 10 cm. And then you're going to shape it with a Hess shape from the side seam to the new line. Same thing in the front. We will complete the back by adding a pleat at the center back. The pleat could be parallel or in that case, I'm going to do it to nothing at the bottom and it's going to be two centimeter wide. So now that my pleat is added, I'm going to trace my new grain line parallel to the diagonal line. 
and my fold of the fabric is going to be on the new line also so for the box pleat I added a notch at the new line and one at the original line so this is giving me like one not notch and a half for an inverted or box pleat the only thing I have left to do is putting my seam allowance all around except on the fold line and the bottom could be 1 or 1.5 centimeter And now we'll notch. Now let's complete the front. So we'll start with the overlap and it's usually depending on the size of the button. A good size button would be one centimeter. So you're going to add a centimeter parallel to your center front for overlap. You should write down what it is then you're going to add twice the size of your overlap for the facing part inside. So two centimeter for this one. This will be the facing and then you need to add another layer because usually we don't put fusible or interfacing for shirt plaquette. This area will be fold in and it has to be a little smaller than your facing. So if this was 2 cm, my inside part will be about 1.8. This is to replace your fusible or your interfacing. Now if you want to see how it works, you're going to cut on that last line that we just did. And we are going to fold the paper just like you're going to fold on the fabric. Fold on the second line and again on the first line that we trace. So I show you now what it looks like from the inside. You have the layer for the interfacing and you have the inside facing and on top just the overlap. Keep it like that and now finish your neck by tracing square the little empty area and trace it with your tracing wheel to have it under all the layers. Now your front is finished, we're going to add the seam allowance and cut it all around, keeping it fold for the cutting. I'm just going to point out that I did my seam allowance on the 1.5 line drop. Now for the notch, you're going to have the usual notch or the one that we already placed. So the armal notch, the yoke notch, the waist. I also put one for the hem because I did put 1.5 at the hem. And we're going to need more notch for the plaquette area. I redo the folding and I want you to do, while it's fold, the notch at the original center front. We need this one right there because your shirt could be sewn with a shirt collar stopping at the center front and at the bottom to make sure that there's no confusion we usually put the notch at the fold line so not the center front just the fold line that's why I have three on top and two at the bottom only. So now you complete your three piece that you need for the shirt the front, the back and the yoke that's it for today. Make sure you watch my next video. I'll show you how to do the sleeve to fit with this bodice we just done. So thank you for watching and I see you next time. Mm -hmm.